There's recently been a succession of studies and reports that point out the severe problems we're facing as a result of human impact. The first thing I want to mention, which you've no doubt heard about by now, is the latest report by the IPCC, which estimates that we have about a decade to make major systemic changes, or else we risk catastrophic ecological collapse. In the following discussion about this report and climate change in general, it's been pointed out that something like 70 to 75 percent of carbon pollution is being produced by a small handful of international corporations, many of whom are known to lobby against efforts to address climate change. It's pretty terrifying when the corruption runs so deep that people don't want to make a change even when the planet's biosphere is at risk. Now second, there have been more and more studies detailing a collapse in insect populations. I covered one of these studies last year, which found a 76% decrease in the ecological biomass of flying insects in German nature preserves. Now a new study has found that this loss of insect biomass also affects the Americas. The authors of the study say, quote, We compared arthropod biomass in Puerto Rico's La Cuyo rainforest with the data taken during the 1970s that found that biomass had fallen 10 to 60 times. Our analysis revealed synchronous declines in the lizards, frogs, and birds that eat arthropods. Over the past 30 years, forest temperatures have risen 2 degrees Celsius, and our study indicates that climate warming is the driving force behind the collapse of the forest's food web. If supported by further research, the impact of climate change on tropical ecosystems may be much greater than currently anticipated." Unquote. I think it's pretty obvious that further research is going to support these findings, as this study, in and of itself, is supporting the greater body of evidence that shows declines in animal populations all over the world. Every biome seems to be thinning out, with the number and density of animals of all kinds dwindling as the climate warms. The excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere that's causing this warming is also being absorbed by the oceans and being turned into carbonic acid. This carbonic acid is decreasing the pH of the ocean, which makes it more acidic. And according to another new study, this is beginning to hamper the chemical processes through which many marine animals make their shells. The increasing acidity affects the minerals involved in growing the shell, and it's led to gastropods and other shellfish having smaller overall body sizes, with thinner, less dense shells that are flimsier and offer less protection. The evidence suggests that the acidification is corrosive to shellfish, to the point that they really might not be able to adapt to the oceans of the post-Anthropocene Earth. And that's a very sad thought. But there's yet another study which has found that mammals, as a clade, are suffering disproportionately in the anthropogenic extinction than other clades, like birds and reptiles. And make no mistake, those clades are definitely suffering too. The authors of this third study estimate that the excessive loss of phylogenetic diversity among mammals will take millions of years to recover from, as species slowly evolve and diverge. These authors say that by, quote, prioritizing phylogenetic diversity in conservation efforts, we could potentially save billions of years of unique evolutionary history and the important ecological functions they may represent, unquote. Now, I've also made this point before in defense of biodiversity and conservation efforts. The species that exist now represent the current manifestations of millions and billions of years of evolution, and when a lineage goes extinct, the entire genetic story is snuffed out with it. A sadly common opinion is, who cares if some frog or some mole species somewhere goes extinct? What does that matter? There's two huge problems with this thinking. The first problem is that all of these creatures perform ecological services that sustain the greater biome in which they live. Everything feeds off of everything else, and if there's a major disruption to one species, it can have negative cascading effects on many other species. The second problem is that we benefit from biodiversity. Virtually all of our medicine comes from molecules that we've found in nature, like something in the vine or the leaves or the flowers of a plant or something in the venom of an arthropod, or the saliva of a vertebrate. All of these creatures are chemical superstructures, 
and within their superstructure is all manner of different chemicals. And we can examine these chemicals and find ones that do useful things, that we can repurpose or modify to use as medicines. Without biodiversity, we lose all of this. We lose our biological heritage, and we destroy the things that made Earth, as far as we know, unique in all of the cosmos. I know that this is pretty depressing, but it's really serious, and all of these studies came out one after the other, and the human disaster that now afflicts this planet was all that I've been thinking about lately. We really need to change our ways, for the sake of the Earth. And for some people, this just doesn't seem to resonate. So, it should be said that we need to change our ways for our own sake. Our quality of life as we know it today with regular food and generally reliable security, we really won't be able to keep things the way they are if we keep going down this path. We won't be able to survive like we have been in the world that we're creating for ourselves. And we really, truly, on a systemic level have to ask if this is really what we want. And if not, we have to make systemic, top-down changes because that's the only way we can save ourselves from catastrophic ecological collapse.